It's a simple choice, but it should not be made simply. Belief or disbelief. Hello, how are we? Doing well, how are you? I am doing great as well. I have to say, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time I was watching this movie. Um, and at my screening, uh, at least once did the audience cheer at something Mr. Reed said. Yes. <laughs> um, which had me fascinated. And I have yeah. to ask you both, how do you guys walk that line of putting potentially lucid talking points in such a horrible mouthpiece? Well, I mean, this this movie specifically is designed to uh, bring up every aspect of religion and, and belief. And, and we always say it's like saying the, the quiet parts out loud. Like, we want to be able um, to go through Mr. Reed and somebody that is ostensibly the villain character of the movie but he makes some very convincing points because he's tapping into a subject matter that I think all of us have, have had deep thoughts about and maybe we've not brought that discourse to the surface but Mr. Reed is finally doing that for all of us. Uh, one thing I had not previously had deep thoughts about was the landlord's game. Mm -hmm. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. <laughs> yeah. Was there any part of you guys that did that on purpose justice for the original creator? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, of course, I think like, you know, writing this movie and talking about these kind of cerebral, um, abstract, um, complex ideas of religion, the, the first goal was trying to attempt to make it palatable for a couple of, mm -hmm. I guess, idiots like Scott and I <laughs> to understand. So using fast food and monopoly mm -hmm. as metaphors for, for topics that are that are challenging. Um, but the, the, the discovery um, as we were researching this film about monopoly and the history of Elizabeth Maggie, it just felt like such a um, clean, clear metaphor for the history of religion and the, the idea mm -hmm. of iterating and, and, and how there are ideas that are old and ancient that people kind of um, can steamroll mm -hmm. over and, and, and maybe even take credit for and um and and yeah it was a, it was it was a joy to get to kind of tell that 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 weird yeah the meta, the history of monopoly it's amazing <laughs> uh scott um sister barnes mentions that she had previously converted yeah. a few people yeah. which i found interesting since uh <laughs> you see how eager sister paxton yes. is while yeah, barnes yeah. is more reticent at first yeah. can yeah. you kind of talk about what you guys thought uh, was her process in a normal situation? Oh, in a normal situation, yeah. yeah. Well, I think like each of these sisters, they kind of have their own skill set. You know, I think like Sister Barnes, um, she's somebody that approaches with a lot of intellect, with like a, a lot of conviction as well that I think she can pack behind that intellect. Whereas like Paxton, we love that dichotomy where she's a little more eager, she's bubbly, she might be racing through these ideas and otherwise they would not be uh, be able to like communicate as clearly their convictions. Whereas Sister Barnes, we love how measured she is, how specific she really targets, and um, we wish the the night's events had gone maybe a little differently. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, how much of Mr. Reed's home did you guys have mapped out while writing, and then how much was either in the moment or with set designers? You know. Yeah, that's such a great question. I mean, we, we when we write, we did, we're very visual. We kind of map out and do drawings with each other. Um, sometimes, like we, we have very similar ideas, but sometimes I think like a door is on the right, and he thinks on the left and we have to get on the same page but the reality is we had an amazing production designer in this film Phil Messina who did all the Hunger Games movies and um, did Darren Aronofsky's mother and he brought so many compelling ideas into this house to make it feel atmospheric and and terrifying um, you know the film's a chamber piece it's three characters talking but we wanted to surround the set with other characters an ensemble if you will of ominous like rainwater coming through the ceiling and a f the outline of a figure behind the girls backs and and do is everything we can to make the, the space feel claustrophobic and creepy. And then finally, uh, what are you both planning to get on the same page about next? Mm -hmm. There, there's five different ideas that we're, um, we're kind of pushing forward right now that range from a giant science fiction movie that is um, to us like the best concept that we've ever dreamt up, um, ranging to something that's a spiritual sequel to Heretic, where it, it takes maybe a, a topic that isn't always discussed in, um, in genre the same way that, that we're doing in Heretic and, and expanding upon that. So. Do you have separate thoughts, or are you with him? No, no, we're we're together. It's just yeah. a question of which one we're gonna do next. Yeah. It's we have. It's tough. It's a tough choice. Well, yeah. I cannot wait for whatever it is. Uh, Heretic already iconic. I hope everyone's talking about it for the rest of the year. Uh, thank you. Appreciate uh, it. Thank, thank you so great much day. for saying that. Yeah. That's so thank sweet. You. For the rest of your lives, there will be before you chose, and there will be after. <laughs> Ladies, verbally acknowledge, please. <laughs>